if you are singing live, you'll probably be singing between 6 and 10. Mm. But in a, in a studio, we will want you to sing from 1 to 8. I sat down for an interview with George Leong, a renowned music producer, music arranger and songwriter. You could be singing to his creations without even realising the Mita's touch that he had brought to these songs. For example, Joy by Leslie Chong, Ting Shua Ai Qing Hui Lai Guo and Dang Ai Yi Cheng Wang Shi by Sandy Lam, and of course songs by many other singers like Ame, Fish Leong, Karen Mok, Jolene, Coco Lee, Sammy Cheng, Mayday, Aaron Kwok, etc. You want tips and insights from an industry insider? This is an interview that you, as a singer or singing enthusiast, will not want to miss out on. For the first time ever, he's also opening a special masterclass that you may be interested to find out more. So stay tuned. So George, thank you so much for taking time off. You know, I know your time is precious and I'm so happy and I'm sure our viewers are very happy as well that you know you are willing to share your experiences. Because you know, with your track record and and I know that you don't like to be placed on the pedestal. <laughs> I know you're really a very humble man, uh, but I, I, I think that you know you can understand that we have so much respect for you. <laughs> uh, thanks, Beth. Thanks for <laughs> coming and interviewing me. Or oh, at least doing it's my this. My pleasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. No problem. So, so maybe we'll start off first with uh, because you, you know, when we were talking over the phone, you were saying that you have a lot of things to say about singers who. You are very used to singing live, you know, but not necessarily have enough recording experiences versus uh, singers who, you know, always go in and out of recording studios and then suddenly expected to sing live at concerts. Yes. Yeah, you have anything to share with us about that? So I think um, yeah. singing live and mm. a studio singer, recording artist, mm. they are like total extreme ends of the spectrum. Mm. Right, because um, one on the live singer has to perform to people, a live audience. And there's audience interaction. Um, there's also the environment. Mm. Because you might be in a very noisy environment, so you have to be, or in a big environment. Like it could be a stadium, it could be a small pub. Yeah. All kinds of um, uh. different circumstances that you have to deal with. Yes. Unexpected circumstances, Including right? Including drunken uh, oh. customers. <laughs> I mean, for some of us, yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, I mean, there are l different, different types of live singers. There are, there are those mm. that really are singing like just um, in the background that nobody's really look, watching. Mm. And there are also those that everyone is watching, like, mm -hmm. you know. So there's a whole different, uh, different category for that. Mm. Then, uh, right on the other end, um, there'll be these studio singers, uh, mm. recording artists. Mm. So, like, um, back then, in my early days, I used to work with mostly only recording art mm. artists. Mm. So, that means they will be, like, um, discovered or signed by the record company yep. and they have absolutely no experience in singing <laughs> to a live audience before. They have no, maybe even no singing experience. You know, back then, there were a lot of idols that can't sing, right? <laughs> and yes. <laughs> they were signed, you know, because they're good looking and yeah. they could they have they have uh, this image. So mm. the, yeah, so talking about idols, so back then there were like two kinds of artists. There were the idol singers and then there were the the what do you call that? Um what, what's the name of Shi Li Pai? Um that means uh people who really have substance. <laughs> substance, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Substance, okay. <laughs> so there's like Ou Xiang Pai and the Shi Li Pai singers, right? Yeah. And <laughs> We have to work with all of them, right? Mm. And the for the new artists, um, usually they start off really, really very, very new. Mm. Uh, I use new terms. Well, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so they have no experience in singing. Mm. And uh, back then, we didn't have like a structured singing pro uh, courses or programs for right. them. Because if there was, I would send them there first. You mean there wasn't? There wasn't. I assumed, you know, because uh, record labels had used to, you know, had a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but there weren't like, uh, there were a few teachers, okay. but they didn't have like a structured course. Like today, they have so many styles, right? They have what, yeah. uh, what do you call that? Uh, the famous ones, the speech level and Oh, all yeah, those yeah. Things. It's the different marketing and branding of singing methods. Singing yeah. methods, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you have structured singing methods. Mm -hmm. It's a very science thing and mm -hmm. all that. They even mm -hmm. show you pictures of the schools. Anatomy. Yeah, the yeah. anatomy. So, Back then, nothing. You just sing, you know. You just chang, you know. You just ask you to sing. So it's quite it was in a different situation back then. 
and new artists will come in and they can't sing, they can't, they don't have proper breathing techniques. And then the, by the time they come to the studio, if they can't sing, then I'm going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, in this, once you come into the studio, it's, my job is to make sure that you record the best take, the best performance. Right. And if you really don't have the technique to support it, right, and you don't have the, the training, at least the fun fundamental, yeah. you won't even last two hours. <laughs> two hours is too long. <laughs> Maybe one hour <laughs> max. Oh, I mean, talking about that, about that, you know, uh, yeah. Sing Xiao Qi, right? Yeah, yeah. So Winnie, she, 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 when she was recording Ling Wu, I, I was around in the studio. Really? Oh my God, I love yeah, that song. song right? Of course. It Is was it like, of course not. It was like my, <laughs> I must sing the song to, really? to feel I'm good enough kind of song, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. So you know, she's quite a good singer. Yes, yes. She, she's like a piano teacher and she's like got a lot of training. Yeah. But she recorded, she spent four days recording. <gasps> Why is that four so? Four days. I thought she is a very good live singer mm. already. Like she can sing pretty well, right? Yeah, that yeah. is just to show you that yeah. in the studio, right. the kind of expectations are different. Mm. Because when you're live, in a live situation, you just go there, you sing it, it sounds amazing, exciting, and then that's it. You try not to break down or have a, you know, or go off tune then that's fine, you know, you just yeah. like, you know, dance around a bit, have a bit of showmanship and everybody will be very excited and scream and scream and no one can actually hear the details. Yes. But in the studio, right, you can hear every single little thing, you can hear the emotion. Right, right. And, and especially when you play back, like, it's, it's life is like you hear it and, and it's yeah. gone. You right? can't remember how it was. Right, 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 yeah. But for a recording, it's lifelong. Like today you play Ling Wu, it's still the same, right? Yes. And it, it was recorded over such a long time just to get that mood. You know that mood where you listen to it, you really can feel So she her. got her Ling Wu after four days. La. <laughs> yeah, it was very difficult. It, I, I think, I think um, that is the kind of expectations for a sing studio singer. First right. of all, you need to have patience. Mm. You, of course, you need to have all your techniques, everything ready. Mm, mm, mm. And then when you go into the studio, you just keep doing it uh, until you get this masterpiece. When you mention patience, right, are you referring to you as the music producer or mm. the singer? Mm, so <laughs> I have a lot of patience. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, for work, Actually, for all my work, it's very, very time consuming. Mm, it's mm. like sitting there, editing, editing, or, or arranging, arranging. It's right. hours after hours. Sometimes you just spend three hours doing something that you just delete and you mm. know, just lose, I mean, not use it. Mm, mm. So you need to have the kind of patience. You must not be, must not be in a hurry to go anywhere. <laughs> yes. um, so that's why it's, music production is a very, very time consuming thing. And you need yeah. to be totally like, like you know, Dedicated it. to getting the, the best product at the end of it, right? Yeah. Regardless of the time kind of feeling. Right. Yeah. So the point that needs patience is of course the artist. So mm. of course I've also worked with artists that are very, very great live singers. Mm. Mm. Especially the Hong Kong artists. So back then in the 90s, I worked both with Hong Kong artists and Taiwanese artists. Mm. The Taiwanese artists were very, very much into the... Hmm, very sentimental. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like you must even that, that little oh, bit of the blotter fry. Yeah, the <laughs> must be at the perfect place at the perfect time. They must get it, and it's not. They are not thinking of it technically. That's the thing. Oh. They are thinking of it with the lyrics and singing, like putting themselves in that, like acting it out. Right. Yeah. Because you can always sing it technically. You can say, oh, over here, I want this technique. I want a, a vocal fry here. Yeah, I want yeah. this. I want that. Yeah. yeah. But they don't do that. They just really immerse themselves in the song and yeah. they sing it from their heart. So that's I the always tell my students that actually singers are like voice actors. Mm, Would exactly. you agree? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah are voice you have actors. to be in the character and then really act out the role according to the lyrics. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what the Taiwanese do. But the, the mm. Hong Kong artists are more show showmen or show women. Oh. So even back then, um, the, the Hong Kong scene was very much into concerts and mm. live shows. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Hong Kong would be like concerts, concerts. So yeah. all those, all the artists would be very much live singers and performers mm. and not studio singers. So I worked with a couple, uh, quite a few of them, but like two of them in particular, we came to the studio and then we recorded a few takes and I think by the fourth take, they got no patience already. Oh! They said, 
one of them said, um, oh, no <laughs> chong And then pack up her bag and just went oh, shopping. Oh wow, so diva. Yeah, I went shopping. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and then it becomes. Of course, she's diva la. She's really still a diva today. Uh, okay. But that is the that is the kind of mentality because to them, the show is the thing that makes the money. Oh, I right? see. Right, and they enjoy perform their show performance. Oh, I see. And then the recording part is like, okay, so back in the industry, right? Back then in Hong Kong, you you sell more tickets, live mm. show tickets. You make more money from shows than for recording. Mm. Right. But in Taiwan, you sell more records than, and nobody did shows back then. So the focus was different. That's interesting. Yeah. So Taiwanese singers were very much into the art of like doing this recording and making it like really perfect into this whole thing. But okay. they were not very good live singers. Mm, okay. Because there was no, back then there was no touring scene, there was no concert scene yet. Oh. In the 90s, only started like late. 90s. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's why their focus was mostly on producing the best recording. Very different mentality. So I had to like juggle these two expectations mm -hmm. and it was quite surprising to me because from when I went from Taiwan to Hong Kong and I realized that all of them can't, can't last even one hour singing or maybe two hours singing the same song over and over again. But the Taiwanese can sing the whole day, the next day, and the day after the next. They can sing it until you're happy. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, because bear in mind back then we didn't have um, like, you know, technology like Pro Tools. We didn't have hard disk recording where you can snip and snip. It was mostly recording the, on the tape machine. Oh my goodness. Just... Which year was that? <laughs> well, from the 80s to the 90s, it was all tape machine. Including the 90s as well? Yeah. It was uh, until the late 90s that um, Pro Tools came about and oh. I, I bought one of the first Pro Tools in Asia. That's when it became more editable. Is that what you're yes. trying to say? Okay. So before that, yeah. we couldn't edit pitch. We couldn't edit um, <gasps> lines, phrases. We couldn't. I okay. mean, we could take the... We could... Well, okay. So the, the process back then when on tape would be we record like the entire takes. Yeah. A few takes of the song. You sing entirely through. Mm, 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 mm. Maybe if you run out of breath or something, you, you can punch in or what. But it was mostly like full takes. Full takes and then? And then after that, we have to comp it. So we'll take one line from this take and then we, we, we will... Cop uh, not copy it, but we will transfer it and then we just like, you know, mix and match them together. Sort of tape them together. Yeah, kind compile, of compile yeah, them together. Chop form is comp oh, okay, I see. compile them into the better take. Wow. So choose the best of each line and okay. compile it. We still do it today, but today we can even cut out one word. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can see the waveform. Yeah. Right, yeah. But back then we can't. And of course, we could. Uh, we can edit pitch now. Mm. So it's a lot easier because back then, just because one note is flat mm. or sharp, mm. you end up singing the whole line over and over right, again or the right. whole phrase. And yeah. it's very tiring because certain notes, like, you know, you're in that, in that range yeah. where you can't get the pitch. Mm. You can be, we can be stuck there for a few hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no way around it. If it's out of tune, then you just have to keep okay. singing it. Right? Of course, also th those are those that are not so you know. Uh, not so vocally, uh, you know, uh, so good lah. Yeah. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. The technique is not so strong. Right, right, right. So they can't. They are not able to adjust their pitch at certain ranges or certain notes. It gets stuck yeah. there. So that was the pain. Uh. It was very, very painful. It took a very long time. All the most of the time, the, the singers will be leaving the the studio. With a, with a sore throat or with a horse oh, no. lose or they'll lose their voice <laughs> yeah that usually is an indication that you're not using the right techniques or you're over singing sometimes you know even for very good singers overusing the voice can mm. can be very tiring you know and then of course you may end up using the wrong techniques as well yeah yeah, yeah. and then I still I still remember um, do you remember Alex To Do The Way of course yeah, so he he he'll come to the studio and then he'll always bring uh, his uh pee pa kao. Oh <laughs> right? he'll bring pee pa kao and you put you crack one egg inside the pea pa kao with e hot water. As in what fresh ah? I don't know. The raw egg. E yeah. mm. And then he just drink it. And that is like his, you know, his protection against um this this voice losing oh. his voice or anything. And so oh. far I mean, okay, you know he sings very much with the um, Forsetto. No, Forsetto of... the, with the with the, 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 the uh what do you call that? The, Oh, it's a little bit of a huskiness, that vocal quality, uh, the butterfly. Yeah, 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 very yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it get he gets you can get sore throat quite easily. True. 
or true, that inflamed. True, yeah. true. So the pea paka sort of like... <laughs> I don't. I never heard of anyone else drinking it, but oh well. You want to try? Why not, right? I mean, with the egg, it's the first time I've heard of, of yeah, it, lah. Raw egg, some more. Uh. But it's hot water, so I think it's half cooked at the end. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So the editing part, yeah. Before the days of editing, right? Mm. It was quite very painful, especially for artists who couldn't pitch, didn't have uh, proper techniques. Mm. And a lot of idol artists, we took like forever to record stuff. And it was very painful mm. for me because we just keep recording and recording and then they got no voice and then you just mm. can't finish you, it. You just can't continue because, uh, you know, the singer is down, yeah. Yeah, three yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. Maybe young yeah. artists, three hours gone, then no, we can't work the rest of the day. Mm. We have to call it a day then ask them to come back another day. Mm. And keep doing that until it's completed. Okay. <laughs> but you do feel very proud you know, when you hear the final product. I'm sure you do, no? Yeah. I, I think, of course, the expectations were different back then now. Okay, oh. so we talk about this, talk about pitch editing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like, so pitch editing was really important for me because, okay, when you're recording, right? Mm. Okay, first of all, you can only focus on something. Mm. So you want to focus on emotion, mm. or you want to focus on pitch, mm. or you want to focus on dynamics. Ah, then still got technique, you know, like changing the different right, right, uh, right, right, right. voices, head voice and mm, all that. Mm, mm, mm. Flipping it around certain words. Right, it's right, going right. to be so difficult to remember all these things, right? Right. On top of that, the, 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 the words that you want to be have staccato, the, the, the slurred yeah. words, the yeah. legato words. Wow, so much to remember. Even you draw until the whole page full of marks or so, sometimes you just can't do it. Would well, you think that these are usually you know, brought onto the plate by the singer, him or herself, or the music producer? The producer. It's usually the producer, They will work together right? in the mm. studio to get all these, to get the phrasing. I mean, all right. this part of phrasing. Yeah. So we will work together to get the phrasing. And usually, for the, some people who are not fast learners, mm. the new phrasing will totally will just trip over it and they can never get a good take. Get a fluency. Uh, yeah, a fluent fluence. take, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, because of that, right, mm. usually the pitch is the first thing to go off, right? Yes. <laughs> That's the first thing that will, <laughs> will be wrong. I mean, we're off. So right. today, because yeah. we got pitch, since we've got pitch editing, we can at least go for a good, for a take where, you know, all the phrasing, the emotion and all that, but the pitch is slightly, slightly off, then we can touch up on it. Right. So right. it helps so much because otherwise, that is a bad take already. You've got to re sing again, yeah. And by the time you get the pitch, then there's no emotion. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm sure you went through yes, that I before. Yes, I have my own share of experiences. <laughs> Everybody has done that. It's really, I must say it's very challenging. It's, yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. It's challenging for a singer. Uh, and the thing is that I personally find it easier somehow to sing cover songs. Mm -hmm. Because when I write my, my, my original songs, right, somehow you have no preconceived, no, no preconceived idea of how that song should be like. Even though you're the writer, Oh, then you need me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will help you conceive it. Yeah, okay. that's my job. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I, yeah. I, I like to take like a song, yeah. look at the lyrics, then listen to it and see how the melody works, how the mm. words will fit in, mm. which words are the, are, are the accents, which words right. are the, the supposed to sing lightly, mm, 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 mm. and where you're supposed to breathe, where's... So the phrasing, oh, this is part of phrasing. Right, right, and the right. phrasing is very important because it's mm. part and parcel of the whole song. Mm. And after you do all this phrasing, it's got to be in line with the the, the direction of the lyrics, the meaning of the lyrics, mm. and also of uh, how, how what's the emotion like. So for mm. example, you're singing a very sad song, then mm. your, your phrasing will be different. Mm. If you're so sad, I mean, there are so many levels of sadness. Like, mm. you're so sad until like the Ling one where you're really, like, you can't even sing, you know, you're going to be crying for days and then you can barely sing. Right, yeah. Then that kind of phrasing will be different. Mm. I don't even know how to annotate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also dynamics. So, like, so another thing, mm. okay, so we go back to this difference between the, the live singer and the recording singer. In a live situation, you basically want to belt out all and make sure everyone can hear you and... Yeah feel you, right? Yeah, about the projection and exactly. reaching out. Yeah, that kind engaging of feeling, right? the engaging, audience. Yeah. audience. Yeah. But in the studio, because the mic is so sensitive, mm. right? Mm. So sensitive that even you can just whisper. And that is an emotion. Mm. So that means on the scale of 1 to 10, mm. if you are singing live, you'll probably be singing between 6 and 10. Mm. 
But in a, in a studio, we will want you to sing from 1 to 8. Mm. We don't want the 8 and 9, 8 to 10, because right. that will be too much already, mm. over already. Mm. Because in Taiwan, they say, Chang Dao, over. <laughs> yeah, so that's over. So you don't need to sing like, until like that in a recording. Unless, yeah. of course, you're singing metal or rock, but in a typical pop song, I mean, you don't, you don't sing like that. Mm. Yeah, so that, that kind of control is very, very different. Mm. So that's why for those people who are used to live singing, they come in the studio and then, oh, they're always, they're more or less just only... Uh, in the same zone, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then the studio singer, because they're so used to singing very softly, whispering, using the breath, uh, the breathy voice. More breathy vocals and yeah, for breath. their certain expression, yeah. So they like to sing yeah. the breathy voice, right? But yeah. when they sing live, they realise that they can't because it doesn't project. Right. But of course, today there are text technology. They can use a special microphone mm. or live microphone, which can still pick up all that. So we can still do that. <gasps> you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, talking about microphones, so that there yeah. are also microphones like um, different microphones will give you pick up a different kind of sound or texture. Right. So like mm. in the studio, right? We we use a lot of different microphones. So microphones mm. to us in the studio as a producer is like. You know the lenses are to mm. a cinematographer? Yeah. So like you use lenses, you they buy they have these lenses that will shoot this amazing film like quality, right, right. right? So depending on the kind of scene they want, they mm. use certain uh, lenses. Correct. That's what you're trying like, to say. Like yeah. if it's a horror film, it's very yeah. dark, they use this kind of right. lens. Yeah. Or if it's a it's a it's an action thing, mm. then it'll be a different kind of lens. Yeah. So the same thing for, for music, you know, for mics, especially for vocals. Because mm. to me, the vocal part is the most important part. It's the soul of the song. It is. <laughs> Sorry. <Yep. laughs> it is. <laughs> it is to me the most important part because okay. as a producer, I mean the music track is important, but at the end of the day is the song and the artist, right? Mm. You're selling these two things. Mm. The rest are the icing on the cake. Mm. So I want to make sure that the voice comes out tip top. Mm. And TikTok is like, I'm really setting my expectations to, okay, when I was young, I listened to Mariah Carey, I listened mm. to, I listened mm. to, uh, uh, Bonnie Tyler, right? mm. uh, Tina Turner. Oh, okay. <laughs> they uh, all sound very different. Yeah, yeah, or even like Aretha Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. And you notice how amazing their vocals are, even mm. back then. Mm. So there was something that, the kind of sound quality we couldn't achieve in Asia in before the mid-90s. We didn't have the know-how and we didn't have the equipment. Oh, you're talking in terms of equipment. Okay, mm, Know-how and equipment. Okay. We didn't have both. Mm. So back then when I first started out, the recording that we did was just just put a microphone there and you just sing. Oh. And, and it, I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but then it's not inspiring, you know. It's, oh, not, okay, okay. it's not the kind of thing that when you hear that, wow, you can hear that the whole mood take over your body, maybe okay. goosebumps, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Don't have that kind of thing. But the West was doing it. And I was right. so inspired. How do they do it? You know. Mm. So of course, in the nineties, I went with um, Xiao Chong. We went. We spent a lot of time in LA recording, and, mm, mm, mm. and that's how we created this R and B sound in the early nineties. Right, right, right. We worked in LA. That was quite a trend. Mm, we, I remember back then. Like, yeah, it was we, very new. That was that sound was very new in Taiwan music. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Xiao Chong wanted to create R and B for mandol pop. Mm. And that, that's how I got my job, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, in Singapore, I was doing hip-hop and stuff and right. dance music. Yes, So yes. he came to Singapore and he found, sort of found me. Yeah. And then he said, oh, can you do this kind of music? I said, yeah, why not? It's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started right. doing it. And then that's it. Because I became his, like, you know, right-hand arranger and did all, arranged oh, all his I songs. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Then after that, he wanted, oh, he wanted it to be even more authentic. And that was the part where I said, okay, you know, this is what I know and you want any more that I, I think we had, we, that's not my mm. area of expertise. They say, okay, let's go to LA. Wow. We will go to where Michael Jackson and Babyface recorded. Oh. And we will go there and we work with the people there and maybe we can learn something. Okay. So we, we went there, we spent a lot of time there mm. between 93 93, 94, 95 to 96, 7, about those five years, we made many trips in LA. Sometimes we, spent, we stayed there for months. 
Mm. And we worked with everybody there, the guitarist, the drummer, John Robinson, the drummer, mm -hmm. played on Michael Jackson's albums. Right. Um, my most favourite guy is uh, Michael Thompson, the guitarist. Okay. So he, at, this, at that point, he was the top session guitarist in LA, mm. which means that he has played on just about every Billboard song. From Celine Dion to Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Babyface, um, and just everything, all kinds of joy. And he played on so many of our records. Oh, these are the unsung heroes that we will usually not pay attention to, mm. but they make such a difference to the music. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really yeah. opened up my eyes and my ears. Mm. And of course, we work with the engineers there. We work in the studio there, Westlake Studios and some other studios, which are the same studios that did all these you know, right. tier A big stars mm, record mm, in. Mm, mm, mm. And of course, we feel the vibe. We what? eat the food there, drink the water, and <laughs> really, it kind of like, you kind of like assimilate into the environment. You yeah. pick up some vibes. So music is actually very much about vibes. Mm, mm. Like, for example, if like you you just, for example, okay, I, I mean, let's give you an example. Like, okay, you just came out from Topayo, right? Mm. And then you say you want to do R&B music. Okay. <laughs> That's a very jarring uh, <laughs> scenery, like just the position. Like. <laughs> yeah, like what R&B is in Topayo. You know, R&B is a culture. Right. It's a culture of black people yeah. in a certain, from a certain area. Mm. If you have never even been to the area mm. and you've only been in Topayo, there's mm. no way that you can create R&B music. Yeah. You can call yourself R&B all, your, all the... All the mm as much as you want, but there's going to be nothing to be R&B in, in it. Yeah, yeah. The vibe is different, yeah. It's different because yeah. even just, just breathing the air there, know, getting to know the people, talk to them, the yeah. vibe, you will absorb it after a while. Mm. And mm. that is one of the reasons why we managed to maybe infuse the R&B vibe into a lot of the Mandel Pop Taiwanese right, right, artists right. at that time. Because yeah. we not only did we work with the people there to get mm. their sound, mm. Mm, we were there to absorb the vibe. Mm, 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 we were in the studio, we were with the musicians, and eventually we, we understood mm. what it was. Oh, the most amazing thing was when we had backing vocals, singers come <gasps> in. Oh, I had, love backing vocals. Ah, we had one black guy and one black girl. Oh, wow. Amazing. The two of them just went, oh. <laughs> Oh my god. And the really good ones, right? Yes. They just walk in oh and they sing like a machine and then they're like, okay, done, and they walk out. I'm like, oh wow, okay. Their voice is so big and wide that it's just yeah. so nice. <laughs> it's like there's additional frequency somewhere, right? Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like that kind of thing. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that thing, you, if you don't. It, Music is about culture. For example, mm. Sing Yao is a culture, right? Mm. So if you're not from Singapore or you're not even from that time, how can you create Sing Yao? Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, 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 these are things that are associated with some with a with a, with a place, with a, with a community. Mm. You have to assimilate into that, that community if you, you want to understand it. Mm, 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 so that's why I was very, very fortunate that I got time to spend, that I got the opportunity to spend time in, in LA, in Vancouver. Mm. So like, um, you know, Ling Yilian's mm. um, Sang Hen, yeah. it was all recorded in Vancouver. Oh, was over it? Over winter. Oh, so wow. if you listen to the album, can you feel this? I could feel it. It was <laughs> one of my favourite albums of all time, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's just very breezy and, yeah, you're right. It has the that calming. kind of vibe, you know? Yeah, very... That kind mm. of feeling, yeah. So we, we absorbed the vibe there. It was winter, <laughs> it was cold. Um, oh, I we were see. on the mountain, there was nothing happening outside, yeah, really yeah, nothing. Yeah. Mm. There was nowhere to go mm. Mm, because uh, Li Jongsun Taka kind of locked us in his house out there. Oh, we okay. had no car, we couldn't leave the mountain, <laughs> the hill. <laughs> we there couldn't go to town. <laughs> we got nowhere to go, we got no friends. So we just um, stayed there and did our music. Right, right, right. And the entire album just has this mm, very cool, chill mm. and sound. Mm. So I think the environment also creates music. And also part of that, that, that part thing, part of the album was done also at um, Brian Adams Studio. Oh! Yeah, Brian Adams yeah. has a very nice studio um, overlooking a lake in Vancouver. Mm, I think it's called Warehouse Studios. I don't think it's there anymore. But right. we, we went there and did some recording there. Mm, mm, he mm. was not around, but mm. his, his studio is amazing. Wow, I'm sure. Yeah, it was 90s and he was selling the most albums. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 
yeah, so the vibe, the environment, it creates the sound. Yeah, because musicians are very emotional creatures. So for you to like do a music, you know, product, you know, a creation, you do need to feel something first before yeah. you can put it into the product, right? In a, mm. in a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I feel that um, we have to open up our eyes and our ears, then mm. we get these kind of experiences and we can mm. put that into the music. The mm. music is so rich, mm. right? Not only the sound, but also the way that we, we do recording and... and yeah. Because we always want to try to... You know the Americans, they are always at the top of the, the, yeah. the business, yes. right? And it's always our dream to make our music sound like that. <laughs> yeah. And I believe that we have gotten there halfway there. Because, um, not halfway, but maybe almost there. Because <laughs> in the 90s, we worked very, very hard. We yeah. bought the equipment, we yes. bought the, the SSLs, tonsils, we bought everything. I see. To get the sound. Right, because when I was, well, in the 90s, I was listening to both English and Mandarin songs. Like, I could tell a marked difference in the sounds. Mm. And I, I love my English songs. But what I like about it, I couldn't find it in the Mandarin music. And it's more of the mixing that's different as well, like the bassy frequency, the yeah. really in the face kind of, right? Because for Chinese music, it's more like vocals up front and everything else is not that important kind mm. of feeling. Yeah, Both have their own strength. <laughs> <That's> biscuit <laughs> as the special guest. <laughs> what? It's okay, he can join us. Hi. Biscuit, say hello. Say hello. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I but I, I like the point about what you say about like being the vibe, you know, and I, I think as a singer, it's important to to feel the vibe of the song before you as an emotional creature can, you know, sing with whatever expression that is necessary for the song. But I wanted to also ask you, right, what how long do you think a song should be produced or you know by the should be recorded by the singer? You know, mm. I know I know it's a it's, there's no standard answer. But you know what What I'm trying to say is here, I hear of many cases, you know, where, uh, especially for independent projects, you mm. know, there's limited budget. Yes. People usually just book a two-hour <laughs> vocal session and they just hope for the best and, and that's it. And then everything just relies on the music producer to just do the magic. Yeah. yeah. So what do you only, think about that? <laughs> there's only very... I think it also depends on what's, what, what are the expectations. Mm, 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 mm. Who do you want to impress with your recording? Right, right. If mm. your expectations are not high, then I suppose mm. just record in your bathroom. Ah, <laughs> not bathroom. <laughs> in your bedroom. I mean, a lot of people record, like, like you know, uh, like a room like this, right. a home studio. Yeah. But of course, home studio has got different standards. So, for example, like my mm. home studio is fully soundproofed. Mm. And the soundproofing part is very important mm. because the noise floor is so low. Right, right, right. And yeah. why noise for, especially today when with editing and stuff, right? Right. Um, when you go and pitch and adjust the pitch of the mm. vocal, if mm. there's background noise, it goes, mm. the background noise changes too. Right, right, right. So it creates artifacts. Yeah. Yeah. So you cannot, you cannot have all these noise. And furthermore, mm. when there's background noise, um, you put through the compressor, all the noise is going to come up. It's going to be amplified. Oh, okay. So the first thing you need is a soundproof room. Mm, mm, you mm. cannot like stinge on this. If you don't have that, go mm. to find a quiet place. Mm, mm, to mm. to get a really professional recording, you still need a you know a decent space to do mm, it. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, but of course, you can get by depending on the genre of music, mm, mm. right? Like if it's a rap thing, then I I suppose you're mostly shouting the mic, so the noise may not be an issue. Okay. Mm. Right. So case by case, it mostly depends on skills, I guess. It's how you get around it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. I also wanted to ask you about like, you know, these days, a lot of the, you know, these days, a lot of the learnings, right, can be gotten through YouTube or whatever, mm. cheap courses online, you know. Um, and then, you know, people who write songs, they decided to do demos themselves or like what you say, maybe do some treatment in their own studio bedroom and then uh, try to do an album out of it and then put on Spotify. Because now this is so, 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 so easy compared to even like I would say 10, 15 years mm. ago. It's just so much simpler. Um, but what do you think is lacking for this particular young generation of people that they may not be educated upon uh, I mean, obviously, back in your days, it's very different, you know. 
uh, you have to follow a mentor <laughs> to get everything that you need to learn. Yeah, but these days you can almost get everything online, supposedly. Mm. And that's why I'm curious to hear what you think because I'm sure these people may not get whatever thing they think they are getting. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think those are? Well, first of all, there's so much content on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> right. Everybody has a different way and a different opinion of doing things. Yes, yes. How do you know which one is right and which one is wrong? I think they are all very subjective. I also have people telling me <laughs> there's no need to pay for singing lessons because you can learn singing from YouTube. Yep. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, but in course, general. The most important way... The, okay, if you think about learning, mm. the best way to learn, right, is actually from apprenticeship. Mm. apprenticeship and mentorship mm. that, those are the best ways to learn something because mm. you are not only impart learning all the technical stuff like what you can learn from a book or whatever but you're actually learning the application of it right so mm. in these these old methods do you remember the days when you know you got a teacher a master then you got to back and back and <laughs> you knew out, down outside the, 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 the huts or the temple and you know what by any ways you know that kind of okay, thing, okay, right? And yeah. then the, the master will not accept it until you, you, you your you knees are bleeding. That or... you are really sincere in <laughs> yeah. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Right? Remember yeah, the kung yeah, fu? Yeah. That was yeah, kung fu yes, thing. Yes. Yes. So yeah. that that is also a reason, you see, because it also it filters out those people who are not really interested. That's a good point. Yeah. If you're not interested, you're not sincere. You just want oh, I want to learn this, I want to learn that, and yeah. halfway you just like you know you're not really serious. Like oh, I didn't know it's so time consuming. I didn't know it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. You're not willing yeah. to put in the hard work. Yeah. Then there's no shortcut. Like I like you know, mm. just example. There's this I know of this this a student. So I've got so many students. Mm. So. I try very hard to teach them the whole everything from bit EQing to compression everything mm. and all the fundamentals and we start from the basics we, we, we really tweak every single parameter mm. but some of them they refuse to practice and learn and they just use presets you know use presets they come out presets oh. oh this is male vocal oh this is female oh, vocal the, okay yeah. <laughs> I mean a lot of people do that but then mm. do you think it works? to a certain extent <laughs> but then you won't f you won't that means you're you are not really learned. What, what do you say? You don't know what you don't know. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that it doesn't work. Okay. Well, Why? That's because, very direct. Because that, that, that <laughs> preset was made by somebody oh. for somebody else's vocal. It's not right. for your vocal. It's a general setting yeah. in a way. Yeah. So it will not work for you definitely because when you're talking about EQing, we right. are trying to get that, that sound to be perfect. We want to uh, sort out some any issues, mm. any like um, bumps in frequencies, any resonances. We want to sort that out. Mm. And then we want to enhance it. Like which characteristics of your voice mm. uh, sounds good and we want to make bring it out so that it sounds even nicer. Mm. You can't get that from a preset because preset doesn't know what, what is good in your voice. Right. So it totally doesn't work. So this guy refused to practice all these things and end up like... I uh -huh. saw in the session and right, open up ten plugins. Open okay. one plug-in, not enough, open another one, another EQ and another EQ. Oh keep adding EQ. Like, uh -huh. like you know what? Isn't one EQ enough? Why do you need to open so many EQs? Because the one to go into adjust, that's open. Oh this one cannot, oh cannot, okay, change another one. Like that. Oh. So there are people who are like that. They are they're not into the actual production because you really want to learn production, you will actually want to learn how mm. to do it properly. Mm. But no, just mm. want to say that, oh, I'm a music producer, that kind of thing, you know, then right. how far can you go? I mean, mm. Mm. I, I, so that's it really. So, <laughs> so, so they just want maybe, you know, uh, to be seen as somebody who does music production and then, uh, but uh, maybe not too particular about the quality of work or they, they feel that it's good enough in a way, right? And they are missing out on what they don't know, you know, like what I said. They don't know yeah. what they don't know, yeah. So, like, like back yeah. to what you said, right? Today, yeah. um, there are the the barrier to mm. getting your music released is very low. Mm. Like anyone can just record anything and just yeah. put it on Spotify, right? Right. So there's no there's no QC. Mm. Uh, nobody says that. Oh, this one is good enough. This song is not good enough. Oh, this one you have to record again. Nobody yes, does that. Yes, because back in the days, the record labels will be the ones saying that these are the people I want to groom and I will vet the songs and the production yep. and then here's 
publishing of the songs, right? Yeah, nowadays anybody can just do yeah. their production and put on Spotify. Correct. Yeah. So like I, I listen to Spotify and yeah. hear a lot of music. It's they are, they are the quality of demos. You know, mm. back then when we mm. do demos, amateur demos, homemade <gasps> demos. Okay. Yeah, really a lot of them. <laughs> but is it a is it a bad thing to do that? I if you ask me, I don't think mm. it's a bad thing because mm. first of all, um, it allows people to mm. put out their material. Mm. It allows them to write music, to try to produce music and put it out. Right. So, sometimes they may have a good song, mm. but the production is bad. Mm. But that's fine because maybe if it's a great song, I'm sure a label or some company will pick it up and sign them and redo it and make it better. Mm. So, but I mean, that there are always different ways of doing it. However, I mean, if you really want to reach to an international audience, then your homemade amateur quality demo will not cut it. Mm. Because they'll come to a state where people will feel that people will definitely know, oh, this is good and that's bad. Right. They will come to that level. Because when we produce a song, we think about so many things. We don't just think of, oh, this is the, this key, this note. We even think mm. about where is this music going to be bucketed? Like, is it going to be marketed online? Who's the audience? We think about, we, 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 this is the A&R di um, direction of it. Mm. We think about the end result, the goal or the objective of what, where is this song going to be, be going to? Who's going to listen to it? Mm. The, who's the audience? Where, where is it going to be played? Like, you know, played in a car, in a club, mm. in a dance club, played in, on a laptop. Mm. On a TikTok, on a, on a, on a work yeah, phone. Yeah, so yeah. it's still going to be different. Yes. The approach to the arrangement, to the mixing, everything is going to be different. So definitely for us, we think a lot more. And of course, having putting in so much thought and so much um, crafting, mm. I'm sure the result will have stand a better chance. I'm not yeah. saying that of it's good. Holding be... on to more audience. I think that's what you're trying to say too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I wanted to also know, you know, like... Um, Coming into a song, let's say coming into a studio to record a song, um, are there any things that I, as the singer, should be taking note of in terms of the music arrangement? Because, for example, if I write a song or somebody wrote a song for me, mm. you know, I'll be like, okay, I have no prior reference to listen to, yeah, but what can I do myself, you know, before I meet you for <laughs> recording? <laughs> you know, or, or what, what are the things that I, as a singer, should sort of know about in the approach of singing for a music, certain whatever music arrangement that is given to me. Mm. Well, I must say that the first thing that, um, the very first thing that the mm. singer should think of is to memorise the lyrics. Oh, very good point. <laughs> because you don't want to be stumbling through the lyrics when we're trying to work out the phrasing and so many other things. <laughs> it, you know, and keep looking and reading the lyrics. Like, and or even learning the song. You know. Oh no, that's not acceptable. So yeah, time no, is so precious, it happens right? all the time. Really? Yeah. So that is the first thing that you need to get out of the door because if you don't learn the song, you don't memorize right. the lyrics, then the first recording session is just going to be practicing. Oh wow, that's a very expensive practice. Okay. Yeah, it's just wasting everybody's <laughs> time, right? Right. And you're not going to get anywhere. So definitely learn the song, memorize the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Then we can work on the phrasing. We can work on the on the techniques, mm. you know, like this part, maybe we're going to sing falsetto for this note. You know, we can work on, on all these things mm, mm. so that once the basic of the song is out of the way, we can focus on all these and also the pitch. And of course, right. once all these are done, we can still record many, many takes of different flavours so that we can go back and we can, I can edit them and get the best out together. Mm, 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 mm. I think, you know, talking about this, right, it's, it's more like uh, the same as, um, at least with a vocal producer or music producer, right, you have somebody to bounce ideas off. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of um, learning from online or YouTube, whatever, mm -hmm. as opposed to learning from a master or a coach, right, there is feedback for your work. Would you mm -hmm. say that's true? Like compared to... Just I sort of follow somebody online, I listen to the courses and then I try to do my thing but I don't really know if my mixing is correct or my Oh, you definitely cannot learn mixing is... online. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Okay. There's no way to train your ears by watching YouTube. First of all, it's not in the studio environment. Oh, okay. Right, and you can't yeah. ask questions and you do not know the context. Mm. So yeah. every song is different, every or even within a song. Yeah, mm. and also 
I mean, they can explain to you, oh, I use this 3K, I do that. But then the thing is that when you have your own track, it's not going to be you 3K anymore. It's going to be something else. Right. Because your track is going to be different. Every song is mm. different. Mm. So how I learned it was by sitting next to... Okay, back then we got this engineer called Tai Tai. You know, Achai. Okay. And he has golden ears. Wow. I find golden ears because he can just listen. Oh, this snare needs this needs a three point five k. Oh, this one with <laughs> the vocal here needs to reduce two hundred and seventy hertz. Wow. He is so precise and he can really. It's like perfect pitch, you know. So wow. perfect pitch for music is like I listen to this note. Doo, yeah. You yeah, know that note. Yeah. Okay, but for the engineer, it's like the frequency. Yeah, they're so sensitive to frequencies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it, it was amazing. I just by sitting next to him and watching him tune the, the thing because it's so the, it's so minute, you know. Yeah. It's so fine this tuning. It's like mm. move something one dB, zero point five dB. Mm. Someone is a very tight band, a very sharp band. You cannot hear it over YouTube. Mm. Mm. You need to be in a studio. Like right in the center of the speakers. Yeah. You need to be in that acoustically correct environment. And right. furthermore, if you're mixing at home and you don't have the kind of environment, then it's going to be very difficult. Mm. It's going to be a lot of guesswork. So mm. like even before I had this room, mm. um, I had my, my previous room was also a lot of guesswork. I didn't have it acoustically um, done up well. Mm. And you know, after the mix, right, then I listened to it on the phone, on this speaker, on that speaker, everything sounds different. It's so difficult. You spend so much time pushing, 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 pushing up and down, up and down, and still cannot get the right balance. That's because the room is not acoustically oh, good. Oh, okay, okay. It's very difficult. Then you go give to the client, the client will say, "Oh, this one is louder. No, but it's not loud here. You know, it's going to be keep having the, these issues. Right, right, right. Because the sound is not good. Mm. But right now I have a decently quite a neutral room, so. I find it so much easier to mix. Everything is just like straight away. I know the decision is here. I can push it up. This is loud enough. This is not loud enough. Mm, 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 you know, mm. just make very administrative, executive decisions straight away and it sounds good. Okay, great. Yeah. So you can't really do it mixing in... I mean, you can't really good, do great music in a, in an environment that's not acoustically treated. Because the, of the room modes, the room modes is just the right. resonance of the room will affect right. it so badly. Mm. The reflections, comb filtering. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, yeah. You know what? Um, one of the reasons why I'm having this interview with, with George right is because I know that he's coming up with his own course. I can talk about this, right? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and I really want you to talk more about this because I think it's such a rare opportunity that your first time opening up, you know, to to really uh, teach music production. Yeah, mm. and in this uh, place as well, very, very, very lovely studio. And may, do you want to talk a bit about that so that we can know more what this course is about? Yeah, yeah sure. So I, in, in the spirit of sharing, um, so many things that I've learned yeah. and I really mm. hope that the next generation of Singaporean musicians mm, mm. will really do us proud. Mm, mm. Right? I mean, it is, we really want to see you do well overseas, internationally. Yeah. And I think to, today's uh, artist or singer-songwriter mm. has a lot on their shoulders. Like they, don't, they can't just only be a singer or a songwriter. They need to be producers as well, arrangers. They need to know everything about music. There's production. a certain pressure, right? Like if you're a singer, do you write songs? Like if you write songs, you must sort of play piano, right? You know, mm. like, ah, then if you write your songs, you must do your own music production, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of idea. And I would have to say, right, I'm excited myself because, you know, back then when I was still a singer, songwriter, uh, I always feel like, Oh, yeah, you know, I wish there's somebody who can teach me. But in Singapore, there wasn't really somebody or anybody, you know, of a music producer level saying that, hey, I want to teach my skills, you know, to people who are interested. Really. And I think it's so rare. So what can we expect to learn from you, actually? Yeah. Yeah, so the way I devise this masterclass mm. is that um, I, it's a very small group class. Mm. So I'm only looking at... Uh, we're going to have three other participants, mm. three learners, together with me. So that's, so that's four. Only three? Yeah. Okay. It, because if there's any more, then we can't have this interactive, hands-on 
oh, experience. Yeah, it's going to be like a class, like a lecture, right? Right. So in order to work together as like a more like a collaboration, mm. everyone can have input. Then I can, I can, we can discuss. So mm. it, it's got to be a very small group, mm. right? So out of these three, um, one one of them will be an artist or singer that has a song. Okay. That, that so we're going to work on that song, mm. and I'm going to we're going to be going through the entire production process mm. from the taking the song from its demo uh, stage and then we're going to go into thinking about how to arrange the song so before we arrange we have to think about how to arrange the it. creative direction yes in a way, yeah. it's like you know before you do renovation you got to right. get the id you got to plan out draw out <laughs> get the materials get the color patches right, right? right, right yeah. same thing we got to do that for music it's okay. not just oh i anyhow do you know yeah. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay. It's just your whim and fancy and self-indulgence. <laughs> you okay. have to think about it, right? Mm. So a lot of thought has got to be put into it. Like, what is this song about? Mm. Um, what's the target audience? What What do we want this song to say? Mm. What kind of emotion do we want this song to portray? Mm. Um, all these things, we've got to think about it. And then we've got to think about, um, also consider the artists, the singers, um, uh, image, you know, like mm. image. Uh, cause, cause, you know, That's a lot of things to think about. Yeah. Even the image, yeah. Because your yeah. image is going to determine the kind of instrumentation, right? Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, for yeah. you, if I go and get a rock band to play, then it may yeah, not really be so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But also, of course, a rock band is extreme, but when we talk about the finer part of things, even the music arrangement, the finer instruments, the kind of instrument, everything, mm. the kind of chords we use, mm -hmm. the harmony we will fine tune it. Right. to the singer, okay. to the song. Yeah. So all these things we have to plan, we have to mm. plan out. Mm. Then once we have the plan, then we can start doing working on it. And we're going to start arrange by arranging the song first. Mm. Then um, once the, the, the structure of the song is more or less arranged, then we're going to be doing overdubbing. Mm. So we're going to do things like uh, overdubbing guitars, maybe okay. instrumentation, mm -mm. maybe even strings. If the song requires strings, then we have right. to write out the parts for the strings. Wow. Uh, yeah. So uh, really the whole thing. Yeah, then we go through this whole thing. Yeah. And then we're going to go into the vocal production part once the music track is done. Right. So music, music track done, we we'll bring the, the singer will have to come in, practice mm. the song, mm. and we'll have to go through that whole thing that we just talked about, like, <laughs> yeah. like what yeah. does this song, what, what are we going to portray, what, what kind of phrasing, we yeah. go through the entire process, yeah. record it. Then when we're recording, we record, we record a lot of takes, right? Mm. Because today, hard disk is so cheap. You know? Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. record. But the more you record, the more work you have to do. <laughs> yes, because then you got, 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 got to go through so many and yeah. And you got to choose the best take that works with them. You can't just anyhow cut and it doesn't join up well, right? Right, yeah. So you have to slowly, slowly go through, put it together yeah. like a jigsaw puzzle. And then after that, we got to edit it like maybe do tuning. So we're going to use different... So I use a, quite a few tuning softwares mm. because I guess I'm quite a purist. And <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so like every... So the best, of course, is not to tune, right? If you're such yeah. a great singer, then everybody is That's ideally. Yeah, yeah ideally, ideally, I wouldn't yeah. want to tune. Yes. Yeah. So then you use tuning um, nowadays. Actually, there are quite a few softwares. Mm. I mean, the main ones being uh, Autotune and Melodyne. Mm. Okay. Mm. But there are actually quite a few more. Mm. Okay. Uh, there's like Revoice, that is that is a uh, race tune. That gives you different things that you want mm. from each of them? Everyone has yeah. its own pros and cons. Oh. Yeah, or the good things and the bad <laughs> things, right? So some will have artifacts. Some, ah, I see. Some will have a certain effect that you like. Okay. So usually it entails me going through, you even for the same song, going through quite a few different software. Mm. And of course I do it I do tuning in manual mode. That means I actually draw out how I want the pitch to go. Oh, wow. You know nowadays okay. a lot of people are very lazy. They put it mm. like into auto-tune and the pitch just quantized to the nearest yeah, note. Yeah, yeah. That is the wrong way to use it. But that's really it. robotic. That's the wrong way to yeah, use it. Yeah. yeah. That if you are doing rap, you are doing mm. um, like T Pain, he he or you share, you know. <laughs> share. You know what's the <laughs> belief, right? I know. Yeah, if you're doing that kind of effect, yes, you have what you call hard tune. Yeah, 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 really like electronic. That's the, the kind of sound we hear, right? 
mm. nowadays, the electronic sound in the vocals. Yeah, so that's, yeah. No, that's called hard tune. Mm. Hard tuning where it's yeah. a quantization. So you sing, it's off, then you go, ding, it just goes to that pitch. Right, right. And once it goes to that pitch, it's straight. It's right. ding, there's no vibrato, there's no like uh, pitch variations. Right. So like, you know, a lot of people, they don't really know how to use um, tuning software like mm. Auto-Tune and Melodyne. Yeah. And you just put it to Auto-Tune, Auto-Mode. Yeah. And then it just bends, air, quantizes every pitch to like, just doing And it gives you that kind of like, very robotic effect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually that totally messes up the vocal. It's mm. such a pain to hear that. And it's like, tot all the express expression and phrasing is gone. Yeah. You can use that for English songs, mm. but for Chinese songs, it's different. Oh. <laughs> right. Because, Especially if you do the sentimental kind of songs, yeah. Yeah, because Chinese yeah. songs, Chinese words, some words have two sounds. Oh, yeah. Huaying, you know, like you, you have to go from this note to this note. Yeah, so yeah, you go yeah. and quantize it, then it's gone. Or you go halfway, then it yeah. sounds weird. Like huaying meaning like, for example, hong, yeah. right? Yeah, two sounds. Yeah. So you can't do that. <laughs> Yeah. There's no way that you can tune. So the way that you're, you're supposed to do it, I do it, the way yeah. you're supposed to do it, is that you have to go in and manually draw oh, and adjust wow. every word. Okay, I, see. I mean, not every word. Hopefully not so many words. <laughs> 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 and after you adjust it, you must make sure that it makes sense in the whole context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not just, oh, let's tune, no, oh, tune to the, the line. No. Then you're mm. tuning blindly, right? You're tuning your eyes and not your ears. Mm. Because when you sing, you know, like sometimes, Pitch is also part of expression. Right, right, right. Yes, right? yes, yes. Like yeah. you sing this part, it's so emotional, you can go a bit sharp. Mm, mm. And you go and flatten it, you go and make it too precise, then that, that thing is gone already. Right, yeah. Or sometimes, you know, like you go down to, you go very low and, you know, you might either go a bit sharp or a bit flat, mm, depending mm. on the circumstance. Mm, mm. Or you go sing very high, you want it to be a bit flat because you feel like you're oh, pushing very hard, right? Yeah. I mean, not to say very, very flat, but just like a little bit. Yes, Just yes. enough to feel that push. Right. If it's totally precise, you don't feel it anymore because it's that you took that part out of it. Mm, 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 so that's why this all this is part of vocal production. And mm. the editing is like, you have to look at it holistically. You have to look at it as, as to how the song, because as the vocal producer, you have gone through the whole designing of the phrasing and the emotion. Then when you edit the pitch, it will also be done in that context. Mm, mm, mm. So it's it's very detailed. Mm. Sometimes it, I take two days to edit the, the vocal. Just the vocal tracks? Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I could do it in two hours, honestly, but wow. doing it once through, listen to it. You know, it's really interesting that you say this now because a lot of my students, they like to compare themselves to, you know, what they hear, mm. you know, on the albums or, you know, nowadays, uh, for example, Zhongguo Hao Shengying, which is also auto-tuned. But, and then they feel, they always feel like, you know, but I'm, I'm never going to be as good as them. And now we hear from a music producer that actually there's a lot of work done to make it as good as, you know, how they sound. Mm. Right. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, another very interesting thing to note, right, is that um, when it, depending on the, uh, the age of the artist, Oh, okay. You want to... <laughs> What's got to do with age? <laughs> yeah, the, the generation. You want to do the tuning slightly differently. Yeah, like, like you know, like the... What do you call that? The, the range or the preciseness. So, like, if you are... Maybe you're, you're a middle-aged artist mm. and you're, you appeal, your audience is like middle-aged people. Okay. Then I wouldn't tune it so precisely. Or if you're a jazz singer, I won't tune it so precisely. Oh, okay. I'll tune it just enough to hear that mm. it's not out of tune. You know what I mean? Just touch only. Why is it that young people get to be more tuned? Oh, young people love to be fully tuned. Like every word is, every note is oh, exactly You're tuned. trying to say that there is a certain cultural yeah. expectation in the sound. Oh, okay, okay. It all started because of people like uh, Katy Perry. Mm. So Katy Perry's producers totally tuned her to death. I mean, she's still alive, but then her vocal is tuned to death. Yes, yes, <laughs> Everything yes. Everything is duh, 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 like a machine, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, because this whole generation of uh, Gen Z, yeah, uh, after Gen Z is what? Millen millennials? Uh, Not millennial already. Oh, no, really? After Gen Z is I lost millennia. track. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but you know, the people who grew up with, with Katy Perry and after, yeah. they expect their vocal to be like, like that. Like that, yeah. yeah like, like a machine, you know, like perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, sometimes when we work with artists like that and 
it, it becomes like there's this whole this discussion of like wow I want my vocal to be like that but I say I say that it's not natural why yeah. do you want it to be like that you I are a see. great singer that why is do you so want, interesting yeah. why do you want your vocals to be tuned like um, like like it's been auto tuned like you, as if you can't sing yeah. but that's what they grew up sort of listening to feeling closest to correct yeah. so mm. I guess I also have to adapt mm. right because mm. I mean if the the singer the artist is young and the audience is young mm. I, will, I guess I have to go that way right. But it gives me this breath mm, because mm. I can do from one end to the other end. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I think it's very important also to be sensitive to to all these uh, cultural and generational Generation, expectations. yeah. I should say generational, <laughs> yeah. Generational uh, expectations. biases, expectations. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you, would you also teach mixing and mastering as well in your course? Uh, yeah, so after editing, yes. then uh, we will go into mixing. Yeah. Right. Of course, um, because this the time is also limited, limited to only working on this song. Mm. But at least you see me go through the entire mixing process. Mm. Okay, I'll be doing two mixes. One is the stereo mix and the other one is the Dolby Atmos mix for Apple uh, Spatial Audio. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing, the new big thing uh, for music releases. Right. So we make two versions. One, Spatial Audio for Dolby Atmos so that you have this immersive audio. Mm -hmm. yep, so we'll do up to there. Um, I won't be, I'll be doing the pre-master, that means we, what we output will be the pre-master. I won't be teaching mastering okay. for this for this particular yeah. um, course. Mm. Usually because um, just mastering alone, I think that is a very, very fine-tuned thing. It's a thing of its own, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you need to have very, very well-trained ears to hear mm. that kind of thing. Mm. So what... If you go through a, like a one day or even a few hour mastering course, you're not going to learn anything. Right, right. It's no point. You can't even master yeah. anything. Mm, so mm. that's why that part is not included. Mm. But up to the master. You can always just get to send the master to somebody else to master, which I would prefer. If I'm doing the mixing, I would mm. like to have another pair of years to, to yeah. listen to it. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So anybody interested to attend a very fruitful course on music production, please do, uh, you know, I'll find the details below. I'll be posting more information below. Uh, so I think once again, I'd like to thank George for his time because it's such a rare opportunity to interview you. And thank you for giving that opportunity to me. <laughs> no, thank you very much for coming Yeah, to thank you for this. sharing. I'm sure our viewers have benefited a lot. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, everybody. <laughs>